All right, what is good, YouTube? It's your boy Rebel back with another video, and today we are talking about the Seed VR2 video upscaler. This is a one step large diffusion transformer model that is capable of restoring videos at any resolution in a single step without relying on any additional diffusion prior. So, this upscaler, without like getting too much into the technical aspects, is a beast. Um, I did a few tests off recording and the results were A1 every time. So before we get started, you'll need to go to my Civit AI page and download my workflow. And then you will need to go to the links in the description and download your GGUF model that you want. I do recommend testing the regular 7B and the 7B Sharp to see which version of the upscaler you like because there are different use cases for each model. Um, after that, you can open up your Comfy UI and you can go to your custom nodes manager. You'll go to your search bar and you will type in Seed VR2 and you will click the nightly version of the Seed VR2 video upscaler by Comfy UI. After that, you can restart your Comfy UI and then drag and drop my workflow into the space and you will get something like this. So the left side is your video upscale and the right side is your image upscale. There's only a couple node differences between the two. But the one thing that you guys need to remember is that if you are upscaling video, you need to bypass the entire section for image. If you are upscaling images, you will bypass the entire video side. So I do have an example actually generating right now, but we can take a look at the workflow for the video side. So you have your load video, your components node in case there's audio included and an FPS cap that you want locked. You have your load or download DIT model, which is your CVR model. So if you don't want to use a Q8, it does come with the 3B Q8, which is a lot smaller, and then the Q4 for the Sharp 7B and regular 7B models. But I chose the Q8 because it's 8 gigabytes. One thing to remember is that the biggest version of the GUF is only around 9 gigabytes. So if you have 8 gigabytes of VRAM, you're going to be able to back this with 8 gigabytes of regular RAM, and you're not going to have any out of memory errors. So moving on to the VAE node. So this is an FP16 safe tensor. I don't know if there's an FP8 or any scaled safe tensors for this VAE. I believe this is the only one available right now. Um, and then this is your video upscaling node, the actual node that does the work behind the workflow. Now, one thing that I'm going to express is one, you have the option to up your resolution from 1080p to 2160 if you'd like. I mean, you can really choose the resolution that you want. But the thing that you need to remember is keep your batch size below 10. I do recommend 5 and or 1. So if you want to batch as much as you can, go for 5. If you want to keep you know, the workflow is low VRAM intensive as possible, you're going to want to keep that at one. The downside to using a low batch size is temporal consistency between frames. So what this workflow is essentially doing is it's taking every frame from the video and lining them up and upscaling them in batches, right? So your batch size is telling it how many frames you want in each group to be upscaled at a time. Now, choosing five gives you five clear frames across the board being generated in the batch with the same upscaling techniques that are being used on the first image to the fifth image. It's just going to be more consistent. So if you use one, yes, every image will be upscaled to quality, but they might not have temporal consistency, meaning like the visual aspects behind motion may be unclear between frames. So... 5 to 10 is going to give you a clear motion upscale, but keeping the batch from 5 to 1 will lower that consistency, but still keep the workflow from getting umers. I hope that helps. 
Don't touch probably anything else in here unless you want to turn off color correction, but I do recommend leaving that on. Um, other than that, I did remove the torch compile and block swap nodes and replaced them with clean VRAM and clear cache nodes to help lessen the load on the CPU and the VRAM. And after that, it is just a create video node locked at the FPS from the video that saves into a save video node. The image upscale workflow section is exactly the same. The only thing that it's actually missing are the video component nodes. So these three nodes. Now, as you can see from the example that's generating down here in the terminal logs, you can see it's using a tiled VAE decode. So the entire process really happens in this big node right here. So your encoding process, the batching process, and the decoding process along with the actual upscale is all happening in this node right here. So we will wait for this example to finish generating and we will come back and see what it gave us. Okay, so the video is done upscaling. It took around 10,500 seconds. I'm not going to convert that, but I know it was a couple hours. So we will now run this comparison workflow for three different types of comparisons. The first comparison being the Seed VR2 3B model versus the native 480p video. The second will be another example of that same comparison. And then the third comparison will be the 3B model versus the 7B model to showcase the differences in detail and upscale. So we will run the workflow and we will take a look at the videos. Okay, so here is our first example. So I'm going to separate the video through the middle so you can kind of get a better look at how it looks on both sides at the same time. Okay, and here's our second example. So this is the Seed VR2 3B model versus the 480p. And you can really see in this one with the brightness, how and the amount of detail, how it kind of shines like really well. A lot of um, detail enhancement as well as detail generation that wasn't there before you can kind of see. So if I go just full 480 and then full 3B. Okay, so this is the third and final example, and this is going to be the 7B model versus the 3B. And you can really see the 7 versus the 3, which one is actually very strong. There's a lot more detail enhancement. The sharpness is increased dramatically. And that's just in 4 billion parameter difference. So if you would like to test the model before you download it, there is a hugging face space for the 3B version of CVR2. You can drag your video or image in and test it. All right, guys, that's all I have for you today. Just wanted to give you a workflow so you guys could get this CVR2 upscaler working with the GGUF models. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe to the channel and leave a comment to let me know how I did on the video. You can also leave a like on the video. It helps the channel tremendously. That's all I have for you guys today, though. So go ahead and use this workflow, get some videos upscaled, and have a good day, guys. Peace.